Not only did the opening ceremony to the Olympics in Paris cause shock and disgust around the world, public opinion of the event is unlikely to improve after a, shall we say, stunning and brave boxer left a biological female boxer in tears after giving up, realizing she had no chance of winning. But rather than looking inwards and doing some soul-searching there over why the viewers recoiled from events and incidents like these, the organizers instead took a cue from what Disney and Lucasfilm have done on such occasions in the past and immediately blamed you, the audience, for their own failures. Let's dive in. This video is sponsored by Black Forest Supplements. We don't usually cover sports here at Midnight's Edge, but there is something noteworthy about this whole Olympics ordeal, and it certainly has echoes of what we have been going through in the realm of blockbuster entertainment for years now. To it, fan-favorite characters have been destroyed, reduced into broken husks of what they used to be, while gender-fluid soy boys are promoted as something desirable, which would explain why a new breed of girl bosses don't need no man. But when the paying audience complains about any of this, then of course it is the audience that is the problem for not embracing the inclusivity of this programming. But all of this has real-world consequences, and it's not just that the weak, the obese, and the subjugated are the ones being pushed by the media. We're bombarded with estrogenic chemicals from plastics, junk food, and sedentary lifestyles that'll turn us all into what they promote in no time flat. Luckily, there is hope, and that would be NMN. That's nicotinamide mononucleotide, a derivative of the B vitamin niacin, which is known to dramatically improve health and longevity by serving as a precursor to NAD+, a compound that plays a crucial role in energy production, muscle regeneration, metabolism, and gene expression in the body. NMN works by replenishing diminished NAD plus levels, which naturally fall at a rate of about 1% per year. A 50-year-old person, for example, has about half of the NAD plus they had in their youth. And you want to keep those levels high, not just to fight obesity by maintaining your body's ability to turn food into energy rather than fat, but to maintain your aerobic capacity and preventing age-associated diseases. Its efficiency has been documented in a number of studies, which I can attest to myself, having tried it out for the last couple of weeks. NMN works so well that the FDA is in the process of reclassifying it from a legal supplement to a performance-enhancing drug, and once that is done, it will be banned, giving Big Pharma alone monopolistic control over it. This move is not based on the efficacy or safety of NMN, but is aimed at cornering the market and taking this means of staying healthy and strong away from you. A weaker population is, after all, easier to control. Meaning, you should get it now while you still can, and Black Forest Supplements can help you out with that. And since they sponsor this video, we have an exclusive offer for you, if you go to our link in the description or pinned comment. Then, for the next 48 hours, you can buy two and get one for free, so stock up now while you still can. With that, let's get back to the Olympics. For more than a century, the modern Olympic Games have been all about unity and combat in the field of sports rather than on the battlefield, and the opening ceremonies have always been one of the highlights, demonstrating both the history and contemporary culture of the host nations. Though in recent decades, because of that contemporary culture bit, some opening ceremonies have taken on qualities that some find rather disturbing. For instance, the opening ceremony in Beijing in 2008 saw more than 2,000 drum to the same beat, with every move and even every smile in complete unison, with no hint of individuality, something which caused mixed reactions in nations not under the complete control of the CCP. The 2012 opening ceremony in London was overall a fantastic ordeal, with the exception of the tribute to the NHS, that is, the British National Health Service. What with the pre-TikTok dancing nurses, the virus, the sick people, and death itself, did not age well once the lockdowns hit nearly a decade later. Or it aged all too well, according to some. 
But let's move up to Paris, because that took the cake. So much so, in fact, that the backlash was so severe that they're scrubbing it off the internet and issuing copyright strikes to anyone caught reposting videos of the events. In one sequence, you had reasonably normal people dancing, not to care in the world, as more and more of them fell down and died suddenly. Then you had a stunning and brave bearded individual that danced and joined other assorted body positive and gender fluid drag queens and commies for a recreation of The Last Supper. Oh, and lest we forget, the supper itself consisted of fruit and a blue naked gay man. And to remove any doubt that they were going for Christian iconography here, there was a pale horse coming in over the water, which I do believe is referenced in the Bible, though Johnny Cash can quote that better than I ever could. And I heard a voice in the midst of the four beasts, and I looked, and behold, a pale horse. And his name that sat on him was Death. And hell. With him. That's not suggestive at all, and President Macron, who just used every dirty trick in the playbook to cling to power by subverting the will of the majority of the French people, who actually voted him out in the recent elections, proudly tweeted, This is France. Something I doubt the majority of the French population, aka the ones who voted against him, would agree with, and for which he was duly taken to task in the comments. As it turns out, the recurring reactions in the comments, namely that the ceremony was anti-Christian and even outright satanic, weren't restricted to just X. On the contrary, this was the default reaction by normal, well-adjusted people everywhere, Meaning, so many were disgusted, it caused an instant backlash that the organizers evidently weren't prepared for. While the backlash wasn't quite Bud Light or even target level, it was enough to be felt. Tech company C Spire pulled out immediately, others may still join them in doing so. But worst, I think, was the absolute clocking they took in all social media, and I should imagine viewership has been somewhat less than projected ever since. This prompted organizer Anne de Camps to issue what the media labels an apology, though, as we shall see, it was in reality a non-apology apology. In their write-up, the Daily Mail quotes her as saying, Clearly, there was never an intention to show disrespect to any religious group, conveniently ignoring that the Last Supper doesn't really mean anything to anyone other than Christians. Her quote continues, On the contrary, I think Thomas Jolly, that would be the creative director, did try to intend to celebrate community tolerance. We believe this ambition was achieved. If people have taken any offense, we of course are really sorry. So, in other words, this was their way of celebrating community and tolerance, and they evidently believe that because of this display, the world is more commune and tolerant now, and that if Christians for some reason should read something offensive into that performance, then they're very sorry about Christians feeling that way. That's what this apology is really saying. They're sorry that you're offended, but in their view, it's your own fault that you're offended. You chose to be offended, and if anything, they probably feel you should be apologizing to them for reacting in such a way, and for driving a sponsor away. So no, there is no genuine regret or introspection here. Likewise, Thomas Jelly, the artistic director himself, also came out and explained that nothing here was inspired by The Last Supper. You're all crazy for thinking that. He said, it's not my inspiration, and that should be pretty obvious. There's Dionysus arriving on a table. Why is he there? First and foremost, because he is the god of celebration in Greek mythology, and the tableau is called festivity. Here it should be added that Dionysus is, for all intents and purposes, also the god of overindulgence. Stuff yourself and drink till you lose all inhibitions, so you can screw up royally while drunk. To wit, Mr. Jelly continues, he is also the god of wine, which is also one of the jewels of France. 
Though here I would hasten to add that the French enjoy their wine and drink with moderation, which is not at all what Dionysus was about. Jelly continues, the idea was to depict a big pagan celebration linked to the gods of Olympus, and thus the Olympics. Yeah, that would probably have worked better if he had featured someone like Zeus and Hercules that people know from pop culture flicks like, I don't know, The Clash of the Titans or something. For movie examples of Dionysus-inspired pagan celebrations like what we saw here, The Wicker Man and Midsummer come to mind, both of which fall within the realm of horror, and there's a reason for that. This may come as a shock to Mr. Jelly, but France, as well as the rest of the Western world, has been Christian for a millennia now. While there are some notable exceptions where pagan tradition was incorporated into Christianity, to a large extent, pagan traditions were seen as sinful and the pagan gods at the center of them were often reframed as demons. Add that to the pale horse and the fact that no one believes for a second that this whole ordeal wasn't a subversion of the Last Supper. And you can see where much of the criticism from Christian quarters in particular came from, though by and large, no one liked what they saw here. Sure, just like the Acolyte has some fans, so did this opening ceremony, and I wouldn't be surprised if there was some overlap between those fan groups, but by and large, this did nothing but drive the audience away. Also unlikely to help matters are more examples of biological females, without their consent, being expected to compete against, shall we say, far more stunning and brave athletes than themselves. Riley Gaines warned of this in advance, and now it's happened. A biological woman being left in tears, her hopes for Olympic glory dashed after giving up realizing she could not possibly win, because the organizers pitted her against someone with a very different bone structure and density. And there's more of that to come. Both that and what we saw in the opening ceremony can only serve to drive even more audiences away, and that's all that can happen here. No hearts or minds will be won over. The world won't be made any more accepting, quite the contrary, and the audience will simply be driven away, and no telling them what horrible people they are is going to bring them back. But as Marvel just found out with Deadpool and Wolverine, audiences can indeed be won back. All it took for them was staying true to what they traditionally were, which is what the audience still wants, and then give them that. The same is true for the Olympics. Look at what they did right just a few events ago. Return to that, and to the Olympic spirit, and the audience will be back as well. For now, let me know your thoughts on all of this in the comments. And before you go, remember to stock up on NMN before it is reclassified as a drug, because it is that efficient. Use the link in the description or pinned comment, where for the next 48 hours, you can buy two and get one for free.